Do you know how important good communication is within a business? Former presidential speechwriter James Humes once said, the art of communication is the language of leadership. Good communication skills are vital when it comes to working well with others. In this video, we'll be discussing five things we must understand in order to communicate better with other people. I'm Sissy here with Jotform. Let's get started. Having an issue with communication may not seem like a big deal, but poor communication skills can be detrimental to the workplace. There's actually research that supports this. It was done by the Economist Intelligence Unit for their report called Communication Barriers in the Modern Workplace. This report shows that poor communication led to 44% of failed projects, 31% low morale, 25% missed performance targets, and 18% in lost sales. Basically, poor communication in the workplace is a big issue that needs to be addressed as soon as it's noticed. This can be especially detrimental to small business owners, as poor communication can keep these businesses from reaching their full potential. To combat these issues, consider following these five tips on improving communication. First, words actually play a very minor role. Ever since childhood, most of us have heard the phrase, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Granted, the use of the word never isn't entirely accurate, but this phrase is closer to the truth than we give it credit for. According to several studies, communication is made up of three main elements, including 55% body language, 38% tone of voice, and only 7% of the actual words used. Many experts agree that these numbers are not set in stone, but it's understood that people care more about the way people say things than what they are actually saying. So when it comes to in-person communication, it's imperative that individuals pay attention to their body language and tone of voice, because even the most well-intentioned words can be ignored. This is why a lot of people might prefer speaking in person or even over the phone. It's harder to detect someone's tone over email or text than it is in person or over the phone. Of course, everyone has their own preferred communication styles, but it's important to understand that nonverbal cues play a huge role. It's widely understood that individuals shouldn't cross their arms or fidget when speaking to people in person. Keeping good eye contact is another way to ensure good communication, as long as you're not staring. Our second tip is to keep meetings to a minimum. While meeting in person is a good means of communicating with people, there is a time and place for sending out a quick email or having a quick phone call. To put it plainly, more meetings is usually never the answer. You might even see a boost in morale if you announced that the number of staff meetings were to be reduced. Middle managers generally spend 35% of their work week in meetings. And for upper management, it's about 50%. So then why do most executives deem more than 67% of their business meetings as complete and utter failures? Unnecessary meetings lead to a lack of quality communication, which means they can sometimes do more harm than good. Before having a meeting with your team, ask yourself, is this really necessary? Who has to be there for a successful outcome? What can I do beforehand to ensure the meeting is focused? These questions should help you cut down on unnecessary meetings and engage in more quality communication with your team. Our third tip is to hold more one-on-one -on -one reviews. Individual reviews tend to be much more successful than larger meetings. Usually individual meetings are only held once a year, but this isn't always very helpful. If someone is having issues in July, but their review isn't until December, it doesn't make much sense to hold off talking about the problem for six months. So if they are displaying problems in July, that is the time to address them. Plus holding reviews only once a year does not help the overall teamwork of your staff. By the time your annual reviews come around, your team may have entirely changed, as people may have left the company, moved to another team, or got promoted. Either way, it's much more effective to hold one-on-one -on -one reviews once a month than once a year. This will keep everyone on your team much more accountable for their actions, and it's a good way to provide consistent, positive feedback as well. This ongoing communication will keep employees more engaged in their work and move them in the right direction. Our fourth tip is to keep in mind that listening is essential to good communication. Leaders are often more concerned with how they speak to people and never learn how to properly listen to people. 
Listening is vital to effective communication and is arguably the most important teamwork skill an individual can possess. For many hospital managers, active listening has become a big priority, as a lot of medical errors are caused by health professionals not hearing what patients are saying to them. Active listening entails asking questions of the speaker, paying attention to their tone of voice, not interrupting them, and restating or summarize what the person has said. It's very important that we become good listeners as small misunderstandings can quickly balloon into bigger problems. Our final tip is understanding that why is the universal language. While the four previous tips are important, it's vital to understand the power of why. In the 2011 best-selling book, Start With Why, Simon Sinek says that there are only two ways to influence human behavior. You can manipulate it or you can inspire it. Since workplace communication is largely based on influencing people, then this is a point that cannot be ignored. You need to be able to simply and succinctly describe the why behind what an individual wants. If there are any problems between coworkers, it's a good idea to backtrack and review their mutual why. This puts employees on the same page again, making it easier for them to move forward in their work. With so many things going on in the workplace, it can be easy to get lost in your job and forget why you're doing it in the first place. This is why it's best to have a common why be front and center at meetings and in individual reviews. So let's go over the five tips one more time. First, words play a minor role in communication as body language and tone are much more important. Second, keep larger meetings to a minimum. Third, go for more individual meetings. Fourth, keep in mind that listening is essential to good communication. And lastly, remember the why is the universal language. Engaging in better communication practices will improve workplace morale and improve individual work ethic. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm Sissy here with Jotform. Have a good one.